Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Ryan, and today I'm joined by my illustrious colleagues. Dave. Uh, I'm Ted. There we go. And uh, today, you were, you, what are we going to be talking about? Okay, so today will be GM tips. We're going to talk about having prophecies in your games and, uh, and the uses of them. So, in ways that you can bring that in. And so, uh, who can use them in your game? Anybody. Anybody? Anybody. So, so, like, you're having a game, guys are rocking out hard, throwing some dice, telling some story. Some dude comes rock, walking by, Goblin's Attack at Dawn, right? He can throw it in there. Or Red Fox walks at midnight, something like that. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like, if you're playing a character that's thematic that they would, like, say you're playing a diviner, like, uh, so in a Lloyd um, game, so the Jarl GM, who who is a Jarl DM, I believe, uh, he's another RPG YouTuber, and I'm playing a uh, sort of Viking-themed game, and I'm playing a seer character, so he's a wizard diviner. And like, you know, sometimes I'll just bounce prophecies off of him. And at some point he's going to like, as GM, take that up. And, you know, I've discussed with him beforehand and mm -hmm. take it up and bring it into the game. But also as the person running the game, um, you know, you can always sprinkle those in to tantalize your players and sort of nudge, nudge them in a different way on the, uh, on the plot arc. So, yeah, so I imagine there's a couple of different characters right off the top of my head that could do this. I mean, you could do the divine art uh, path where you're the cleric with the knowledge domain. I think, you know, you could definitely do like a seer diviner type character that way. Or obviously wizard diviner. I don't know. I don't... Warlock, I could see the warlock getting visions, especially like the sort of, um, you know, great old one pact. Like that makes a lot of sense. You get. Certain... I, can, I can see it, but I don't know if the mechanics support it off the top of my head. Well, it, it's more of an RP thing than a, you know. Than well, a... I mean, there, there's, there's a couple of different angles you can look at it. You can look at it from totally an RP perspective where it could be touched with anyone or it could totally be a thematic thing based on you know what kind of powers or character build you actually have um you know i i personally i like to use uh you know or i have used prophecy in in games in the past but i you know i'm always leery about using them because when you put forth a prophecy if you make it too centralized or too important and the players don't bite onto it you know, it kind of mucks with the material you already have written or, you know, prepared in that vein. Um, well, there's two different ways to do it, though. Like, there's um, prophecy from the player standpoint and prophecy from the DM standpoint. Right. Um, obviously, from the player standpoint, you need to get permission from your GM first mm. to be able to throw that Because if there. they put that, if you throw that thing into the game and it never comes to pass, it's like you never said it because it's not <laughs> going to happen. Although, in a long enough time, time frame, all prophecies come true. I mean, really. Or... The ham sandwich will fall off the wall. Ha ha! It happened 15 years later. So, yeah. I'm, I'm still waiting for that one. Yeah, there you yeah, go. The ham sandwich on the wall. Yeah, yeah, construction <laughs> workers like building a, a wall somewhere, and he's having his lunch, and his um, lunch box falls off, and there you go. Nice. Yeah. So, using it as the GM, like, what tips would you give? Like, for me personally, I don't think you should try and do outcomes like you shouldn't the prophecy shouldn't be an outcome it, it's, uh, prophecies are always vague like and that's that's the power of them like look at nostradamus or any other historical sort of instances of a prophecy they're always super vague so like there there's about a dozen things throughout the course of history You're like oh that was that thing yeah. it has to be vague and should be full of symbolism mm. It, you know, it, stay away from absolutes and being specific yeah. because you're setting yourself up for either you have to cram something down someone's throat, you know, or it's just not going to, it's going to be really hard, much harder to work in. Mm. The, the other thing, you know, using, using the vague, you want to make sure that the prophecy can be interpreted in multiple ways so that if you're using it and, you know, the players wind up going a little left of center that you can still technically use it or if, you know if you're a player throwing it out there that you're being vague enough that the, that the gm can say okay i think i can use it this way whereas the player might have been thinking it you know complete you know other other direction you know so I, that's 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 the way i like i like it 
Yeah, I mean, like, you could say uh, uh, the chimera, uh, chimera will descend, um, I, I don't know, figure out some other, like, location type of thing. Mm -hmm. But, like, a chimera could be, like, any sort of monstrosity or something like that. Or maybe it's, it's actually... Um, a construct, you know, that has like multiple parts or whatever. You just have this attack that happens with this thing that has like multiple pieces, you know, like different, uh, a composite of different animals or whatever. Like it doesn't have to literally be the, the chimera from the monster manual. Are you yeah. sure? I'm pretty sure. You had an interesting idea about using um, prophecy in a game that you're you're in. Yeah. Well, so I mean, with, with like the sort of. The, the RPG entertainment sort of stuff where, like, you know, you almost make it so that it, it, it could be, like, you're you're figuring an audience is going to check this thing out, to be watching whatever you're doing. And I had an idea, like, you could almost do a hook where, like, the seer character is going to reveal a prophecy at the start of every session. And so you almost make it kind of, like, format, formulaic. Is like, a lot of TV is super formulaic. So you could have, like, that's always the opening sequence is, like, the prophecy is revealed. Or even, like, I'd basically come up with that the character had, you know, had some ideas of prophecies, prophecies for the session I missed, like of well, that's say, what I was actually yeah, talking about. Yeah, having the visions of what the the previous session was. I didn't actually have time to work that into the last session, but but I mean, like I had already come in, come up with it. Yeah, you know, so it was just like an extra so, RP. So you dropped the ball. I did drop the ball. Curses. Yeah, yeah and we kind of rushed past that part. But I mean, yeah, like. For the session that I wasn't there, that I literally just watched on YouTube, I was like, oh, well, this is how my character would see it in his vision. And then, you know, that made sense. So it was like a recap done in Prophecy. Yeah. So, um, you know, Prophecies have several ways they can happen. And in several ways, you can insert them into your game. You know, um, you can, through dreams, mm -hmm. uh, visions... You know, it's like especially like the whole like sweat lodge type thing, or or, or you know like the peyote induced, yeah. um, you know, basically like I guess ritualistically they can be introduced. Um, they can be found, you know, as snippets, um, you know, scattered throughout different texts. Yeah, pr predictions ba based off of you know events that have already transpired. Yeah, yeah, I think that one fits well into the you know the cleric knowledge situation. You know, someone who's always poring over books. Yeah. Or you could also like if you you know if you're Augury plundering or plundering tombs or mm. runes you know these there could be writings on the on walls and stuff like that that could be a prophecy. Um, Eberron had a pretty good series that I didn't I don't think I finished reading it for whatever reason I got yeah I don't know if you ever get hung up waiting for the next book <laughs> and then you forget to look for the next book. Mm. But you know um, you know they're they're dragon prophecies and you know that was done really good where. You know, he would find snippets of the prophecy, the same prophecy in different places, right. and it would appear to to that to the main character in the book. And also, too, like in anything where there's multiple languages or translations, there could be multiple interpretations that the players find. Like, oh, it could mean this thing or this thing. Right. So it becomes its own mystery, and it also leaves you some wiggle room as the GM. Right. Like, oh, well, you don't know which side has this right. So. Yeah, the, the, yeah. There's you talk thing. about a dark lord. Is it is it someone of great evil or some someone whose you know skin coloring is dark? You know, it, it's like all right, which way is it gonna go? Yeah, or yeah, he wears dark armor. Or, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, you know, I, I always find prophecy to be an interesting and really cool thing uh, in fantasy. Mm. The, 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 hard, the biggest problem though is unless you're actually writing a novel. You know, there's so much of it that gets left up to what the players decide right. to do in player agency. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know... But like anything that we've talked about before, inaction doesn't mean that the thing doesn't come to pass. It just means that it came to pass and the players weren't intervening. So the consequences could be much more dire. So it could be, you know, somebody else dealt with it or, you know, it didn't get dealt with and now you have to deal with it. Yeah, like you have to deal with the fallout right. of the thing. Right. Well, th yeah, there's always that, but you know, depending on which direction your game goes in, like, so this thing is happening in kin Kingdom Y, 
but your players have gone off to Kingdom X, right. and it's not like they got well, the but, nightly news. But that's the same thing where like you leave it vague enough that it's not going to be like it's not always going to be Kingdom Y. It could be Kingdom Z that you wrote it vague enough that it's like in the vicinity of. Well, true. I could just uh, follow them. <laughs> it could be the yeah. It, it's actually in this kingdom where this mountain range is on the left hand side, and you just make that kingdom be wherever they are. It, right? it goes back to the illusion of choice. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's it's kind of like. You let your players choose how they they get to the narrative, but you can usually get it in there without like cramming it down their throats and making it feel like it was the thing that they chose exactly. So it's you know it, it's it's not too hard to make something kind of come to pass. Now in this edition of D and D, I kind of like some of the things they've done with your your seer like um, diviner like abilities. Where oh, yeah, they they're fantastic, yeah. yeah. Where where it is like, hey, just you bank these roles and you use them when you want to, you know, and how whatever the parameters are. Yeah. That because one of the hardest thing that's always been with this game is things like augury, right? Yeah. Well, and and so with with the, the diviner ability and even I, w I would frame the lucky feet for that this type of characters, like when you go to use that ability, RP like. I told him that this thing is going to happen and here's here's it like you know I mean for lucky yeah. you roll the die and like see what it is and like yeah I told this character earlier in the day that this such such was to happen he needed to duck when this when this creature swings so then therefore he doesn't take the the awesome blow to the face well yeah. actually that's another really good use of lucky is the fact that you can you can reflavor that reskin that to be like you know a, a, a seer like sight. ability yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you know instead of just being lucky yeah because my diviner is both a diviner with the Reroll ability and mm. has lucky, so he kind nice. of has so much dice manipulation. That he just needed to be a halfling. If he had ha yeah, halfling on time, well, except for you'd have to wait for the lucky feat. So yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can take it at first level. Yeah, yeah. So right out the gate, as a first level human, you know, like I had lucky, and then I had to wait a couple to level two for the diviner. Right. Um. But yeah, like that's that's five die rolls to manipulate in the course of a day. So, is it is the um. The diviner only gets two. For starting off, you only get two, and then as you get higher level, you get that extra one. It increases. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, but it's so much sicker because you can manipulate either your die roll or anyone you can see, any creature you can see their die roll. Whereas lucky is like you're only either uh, you know only proactively affecting yourself yeah. or adversely affecting someone that's targeting you right. with an attack. So. Yeah, like it's it's a bit of a trail, but yeah, you can always your sight's limited to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but yeah, it, it's it's an awesome way to just sort of like, it's not even retconning because you're filling in a detail that would not have like gone into the to the game. Like you don't, it's like you don't role play your characters going to the bathroom and eating and drinking. Like <laughs> you know, but so maybe you don't. Yeah, yeah, right. So you're not you're not playing out like every single little moment that your characters have together. You don't role play every conversation they're going to have. So it makes sense that there's going to be these gaps in narratives in, in the story that even when you're reading a novel, sometimes they, they'll like flashback, oh, this thing happened and this, right. is, this is what was going on at the point in time. So there's no reason why that can't happen at your tabletop. That's so, true. So with, with, ga with game masters using prophecy, you know, you, you, you know, you know, you know, you know su summing it up, you want it to be vague um, you you want it to be able to have multiple uh, options, possibly in multiple languages. You know, creating these different scenarios. Obfuscate, obfuscate. Yeah. Um, you know, you want you want to have it possibly you know being out there to kind of um, deal with the illusion of choice, or you know have it happen elsewhere if the players decide not to deal with it. What are what are other key points to to make sure these guys you know are, are using it. Well, one is if if you want to add this into your game as the player, mm. uh, and the GM sure, buy in for that. Yeah, yeah, get the get the GM, and again, like work with your GM and find out some basic guidelines and the do's and don'ts and his well, opinion. Well, like and and just well, don't be like, yeah, my character is going to get this plus five thing of awesome. Like, don't don't <laughs> yeah. like dip into like you know like you're trying to get like dip into the honey honeycomb here and have something amazing. You know, just like make it stuff that's like just interesting, and it turns into like a little bit of a. Uh, an improv game or whatever, or not even an improv. Like just it's a, a mini game. It becomes a mini game within the game. It's a storytelling device that you can work out between you and your GM. Like you give him this little thing that he can bite off of, and then you know a few sessions later you get to see what he came up with, how that kind of comes true, into prediction. 
And again, as the player, don't overuse it. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't overreach. Don't make it a burden on your GM to use. But it is. It could be a nice little jumping off point as the GM to like, oh, I'm kind of stuck for for what I'm gonna do. And you know, the the players like, you know, they could send you an email like, I'm thinking about putting this into the game. What do you think? So I mean, you could even pre-decide what that is before you come to the table, so you can kind of just say yay or nay, or like, this is too specific in scope, or however you want to do it. You can kind of work it out together. Yeah, you could also do things like, um, you know, little little like flashback things. Like, say you say the DM puts something in that's kind of like, yeah, a minuscule, just a detail. There's no reason why you couldn't turn that into like a prophecy you had. Or even about like the trinkets, like a trinket could yeah. factor into a prophecy. And also too, as a GM, like this stream can both go both ways where the GM, you can feed the prophecy to the player to foreshadow something that you're going to use later on in your game. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've definitely yeah. done that with dreams and stuff like that. And yeah. I think you know, a lot of DMs do. It's kind of cooler to give it to the player, and like then this way they can like take that s little scripted segment and like make it their own, put their own spin on it. Oh, I see what you're saying. You, yeah. you basically, all right, say so you write it out, hand it to them, and be like, here, this, this is, is what you, you see or imagine or whatever. Yeah, yeah, do you want to role play this out? Do you want to share it with the rest of the players? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the best if the player is going to be, you know, in the mindset to, to RP it out. So. Well, yeah, it's kind of pointless if he doesn't role play it out. Otherwise, you should have just did it yourself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, if, if you went through the trouble of kind of creating this scene and, and you wanted to be there, or you, you could co-create the scene with the player. Like, mm -hmm. you, you know, basically have the dream sequence where you describe what's going on, you describe him being there. You could even involve all the players at the table if it's that kind of a... Of a uh, the prophecy includes everyone, mm -hmm. and have certain things. Play out. And then like it'd be it'd be a really cool opportunity for you as the DM to, to do something really cool to those players or something horrible, mm -hmm. because it's like a mini dream sequence that's going to go away once mm -hmm. once he wakes up. Right. Yeah. So you guys could you could totally co-op it. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't think I have anything else. No, I, I think it's it's pretty. It has been spoken, so it's written, so it is done. But you know, if you guys have any cool prophecies that have come up in your games, like that are super memorable, definitely put them down below in Mike the comments. Mike, he's gonna have some, I bet. Yeah, yeah. So you can put those down in the comments, so like you maybe give some other people some inspiration, an extra D twenty to roll when they're at the table, if you will. So you guys can like, comment, or subscribe. And you guys can check us out at uh, nerdrucky.com. Or you can support us on Patreon. Till so, next time. Uh, Till next Stay time. Nerdy. Stay nerdy. That was so off. The uses of them. So in ways that you can bring that in. And so, uh, who can use them in your game? Anybody. Anybody? Anybody. So, so like you're having a game. Guys are rocking out hard, throwing some dice, telling some story. Some dude comes walking by. Goblins attack at dawn. Right? He can throw it in there. Or Red Fox walks at midnight, something like that. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like if you're playing a character that's thematic that they would, like say you're playing a diviner. Like, uh, so in a Lloyd um, game, so the Jarl GM, who who is a Jarl G DM, I believe. Uh, he's another RPG YouTuber, and I'm playing a uh, sort of Viking-themed game. And I'm playing a seer character, so he's a wizard diviner. And like, you know, sometimes I'll just bounce prophecies off of him. And at some point he's going to like, as GM, take that up. And, you know, I've discussed with him beforehand and mm -hmm. take it up and bring it into. I don't know. I don't... The Warlock, I could see the Warlock getting visions, especially like the sort of, um, you know, great old one pact. Like that makes a lot mm -hmm. of sense. You get. Certain... I, can, I can see it, but I don't know if the mechanics support it off the top of my head. Well, it, it's more of an RP thing than, a, you know. Than well, I mean, a... there's, there's a couple of different angles you can look at it. You can look at it from totally an RP perspective where it could be touched with anyone or it could totally be a thematic thing based on Hey guys, welcome to Neurarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Neurarchist Ryan and today I'm joined by my illustrious colleagues. Dave. Uh, I'm Ted. There we go. And uh, today, you were, you, what are we going to be talking about? Okay, so today will be GM tips. We're going to talk about having prophecies in your games and, uh, and the game. But also, as the person running the game, um, you, know, you can always sprinkle those in to tantalize your players and sort of nudge, nudge them in a different way on the, uh, on the plot arc. 
So, yeah, so imagine there's a couple of different characters right off the top of my head that could do this. I mean, you could do the divine art uh, path where you're the cleric with the knowledge domain. I think, you know, you could definitely do like a seer diviner type character that way, or obviously wizard diviner.